so those are the kinds of things that, that we deal with when we deal with these jurisdictional issues. And we, we've had an enormous amount of trouble getting, I think, uh, any landings data out of Cuba and quality landings information on, uh, from Mexico. So it's very difficult to try to, I mean, basically all of our stuff in the U.S. is done on U.S. Gulf landings, but clearly it's not the whole ecosystem, and so it really clouds the picture. Well, welcome back. People could grab their seats and we can finish up the last two uh, presenters and then a uh, panel discussion. And then uh, we'll be on track to break for lunch. So without further ado, I'll give it back to uh, uh, Karim Aiden. I'm very pleased to introduce the next speaker. He's, uh, you've already heard about him a bit today. He's, uh, I'd like to, uh, Diana uh, Evans mentioned him in uh, passing. He's the, uh, the mysterious uh, uh, council member who is also the member of the Ecosystem uh, Committee in the uh, North Pacific Fisheries Management Council. And I should say that uh, under, his uh, um, under his guidance, um, Diana mentioned shifting baselines. He didn't, she didn't mention that sometimes those baselines had to be actively picked up and pushed or shoved. And I think uh, they was in, instrumental in pushing a lot of those baselines um, along. Uh, he's a, a professor at the School of Marine Affairs here. Uh, as I said, a former uh, council member on the North Pacific Fisheries Management Council. And he is currently uh, chair of the NOAA-wide uh, Science Advisory Board. So please welcome uh, Dave Fluharty. Someday we'll tell you how we got, um, we got the uh, ecosystem committee started in the North Pacific. Uh, White in 19, 1995. That was one of the first baselines that uh, we shifted basically in the Hilton Bar drinking Lagavulin uh, and, <laughs> and conniving with the, with the SSC. So um, my task today is to really follow what Don and Diana have, have, have done. And, and what I'm, I'm going to do is, is go back to the heady days of 1996 when, when uh, the, the, the Sustainable Fisheries Act was reauthorized, called for a, a, a uh, 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 sort of catching the wave, trying to, trying to see where, and, and I thank uh, Pat Livingston for this, this slide, um, we can start seeing that ecosystems started getting mentioned in the, in the marine science literature. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure this is not complete, but it, it you know, it, looking at an ecosystem approach uh, is fairly recent here and, and has really gained speed. And then, then clearly now with just the people in this room, we're producing more papers <laughs> each year than, than are, are up there. So, so uh, uh, and it's, it's getting, you know, ecosystem ideas are getting, getting uh, thought of all around, uh, around the country. I, th I thought this was a particularly interesting uh, paper where we're looking at EBM for fisheries for 33 countries. If you haven't taken a look at that paper, you might want to might want to do so. Um, but what 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 we're looking at is is you know trying to work in this area for the last um, uh, about 15 years. I've I've been amazed at at how slowly uh, things have have uh, actually actually moved. Um, there, there were, NIMS actually was, scientists were actually uh, working on this in the mid 80s. They, they had a report, it's all done, you can find it in the dusty archives. Um, and then we had a change of administration and, and it was put back down until 1996, the, or in, you know, the, the reauthorization of, of the uh, Magnuson Act brought this back up where, where uh, Congress called for a, a group of, of scientists appointed by National Marine Fisheries Service to advise Congress on the use of ecosystem principles. And I guess we can't do that. Um, 
today because of uh, Andre's admonition against talking about principles. And I think Jason Link would point out that these really aren't principles anyway, uh, as he did in a, a good paper. Um, but our, our whole idea was to kind of kick, kick forward, put a marker out uh, for, uh, for um, how we could actually move ahead with an ecosystem-based approach in, in, uh, in fisheries. Our chief recommendation was to develop regional fishery ecosystem plans. And you've, you've heard two variants on, on that this morning. The Alaska plan, which was the umbrella plan for the Aleutian Islands, it's non-regulatory, which is what we intended, and Don McIsaac trying to push a regulatory uh, plan up the hill. The reason we chose to, to go with a non-regulatory but umbrella plan that would bring, bring things together, so we didn't think that we were ready to write the legislation to mandate the, the a, a fisheries ecosystem approach into, into Magnuson. And by 1999, those of you who are working in this field knew that we had just seen what an unfunded mandate happens with the essential fish habitat. So in, in, 19, in 1996, the councils were handed an 18-month uh, uh, period in which they were to, to fully, um, fleece, uh, fully implement um, and, and amend all the fishery management plans to include or in essential fish habitat. And we didn't want to pass on another mandate uh, for, for them. So put it, our, our chief rec recommendation was that. You heard about those this morning. I think it's really interesting that we had, we had quite an, an interesting committee, including Jane Lubchenco was a member of our, our, uh, our uh, committee, and she's now the head of NOAA. So the question is, will, will she put the, uh, Will, will she accelerate the rate of in, impl, implementation of an ecosystem-based approach across NOAA? Um, and so this, I've been challenged. I, I've, I've got um, a, a, lot of, a lot of slides, and I don't intend to, to run them through. But we also wanted to make this, make a fisheries ecosystem plan something that people could start with right away. And so, you know, if, if you, um, you know, I think people certainly at this meeting have been disabused of any uh, concept that, that we're actually doing a completely, you know, just single species management. Um, but, and, and we've, we have papers in the literature that lay out different visions of, of what a perfectly integrated um, uh, fisheries uh, program would be or what a, fi a totally uh, integrated uh, ocean management would be. Uh, but we're quite a ways from being able to actually achieve that uh, in, in most places. And so what we were trying to do was to figure out any place you put this, call it the high jump bar, any place we wanted people to be able to clear it, clear it easily, and gain, gain facility, and then start moving the, the bar up uh, over time. And so this, this was, our report to Congress was in 1999. I can't tell you whether anybody in Congress read it. Um, I, I know some people did read it and uh, have commented on it, and, um, but it was, it was amazing. There were, there were 1,000 copies of that made, and I saw a box of them back in, in Silver Springs not too long ago. So, so uh, you know, this was a well-kept well -kept secret. Um, I'm glad to hear that Don McIsaacs knew about it and, and that the councils considered it. But the councils, you know, it was, it was a very slow uptake. I mean, the, the 20 members there, we all made a pact that said, if, if NOAA will pay for us to go to each of the regions, we will go and deliver this report and explain what, what it is that we, we mean. And I think if that had happened, we would have gotten a much, much better uptake because I think most people saw it as, as a huge unfunded mandate on top of many others from the Sustainable Fisheries Act. Um, so I'm just going to, we're not going to do the principles. Um, we did have a, 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 a definition which also is very user friendly uh, for, for ecosystem based management is using what you know about the marine ecosystem to inform management decisions. Uh, we'd like to think we're doing that anyway. Uh, this just puts an ecosystem, uh, stronger ecosystem component to it. And, and we, we were also clearly um, aware that, you know, if you, if you think of a continuum from sort of no use, the, the ecosystem is 
pristine, moving through an extractive use and modified ecosystem to the place where prohibited use. I mean, you've trashed the ecosystem or you've got an endangered species that, that prohibits things. You have a very um, modified ecosystem. Perhaps it's resilient. Uh, perhaps you can, it will lend itself to, to restoration, although I, I take your point about how, how difficult that might be. But we're, we're thinking that we're, we're moving from sort of this, this part of the spectrum over into this part of the spectrum with an ecosystem-based management approach. And so in terms of policy guidance, so this is what we wanted people to think at at, at, the, at the high level. So the change the burden of proof. If you read quickly, you would have noted that uh, Paul Dayton was a member of our group and he had just published his paper on <laughs> changing the burden of proof. So we had to throw that one in, or we at least had it to, the, the precautionary principle was much under much discussion. Um, purchase insurance, that's Bob Costanza's work, an ecological eco economist. Um, learning from man management experience, that was Bob Francis. Um, um, use incentives to achieve goals, um, that was kind of where I was, was, was working. And then we had promoting fairness and equity, which came from the, the members of our, uh, the fishing community that were actually on the report. Um, we had a goal, maintain ecosystem health and sustainability. Um, from what I've seen, there hasn't been much improvement on, on a restatement of this goal, whatever this goal means. Um, people have tried. <laughs> um, so the, so the, this, this fisheries ecosystem plan we're not going to look at because what we want to figure out is, is um, um, why, you know, we don't have a harmonic uh, integrated ecosystem approach after we had such a good start in 1999, or at least that's my opinion, and we can debate that later. So, um, some people have worked on this. I mean, in addition to to Anne's very nice update of, of this work, you know, people immediately jumped on this, particularly from from Alaska, because a lot of what we were doing was actually bringing the Alaska approach into a broader approach that we hope would be would be um, used nationwide. Um, and, and Diana mentioned the, the supplemental environmental impact statement. I mean, this, this, this is a, a NEPA document, and I want to say, you know, when you do NEPA right and you look at cumulative effects and you look at all these different things, you come awfully close to, to developing an ecosystem-based approach in, in the U.S. system. The difference is you're still man working, you're, you're looking at the environmental impacts of a single management or group of management actions. And so you're, you're really not stepping out and looking at all, all factors that, that impinge. Although with 7,000 pages, we did, I think, do a pretty good job in Alaska. Um, so, so after after the the um, paper came out, uh, we did have Senate hearings. I don't know if Penny Dalton's still here. It was my first time to meet Penny Dalton. She was the, the um, head of National Marine Fisheries Service. She and Andy Rosenberg came and, and said, "Gee, we really liked your testimony. That was a great report." And that was the last we heard from <laughs> NIMS about, about that report um, until much, much later. But actually NOAA picked up the ball and said, oh, this fisheries ecosystem idea is pretty good. Let's do it in the Chesapeake Bay as a, as a, as a tryout. And so there is a, a, a full uh, fisheries ecosystem plan that was developed by, the, by 2006 for the, the, um, for, for the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, after we left off, the, there, was, there was sort of a feeling like, well, who are those 20 people to tell the nation how to implement a fisheries ecosystem plan? And so they said, let's have another group to, to, um, to, to expand on what they, what they might have meant. And unfortunately, my observation is that, that that group never read what we wrote and went off into another direction, which MAFAC, which is the, the Marine Fisheries Advisory uh, Council, eventually said, we don't like this, and it never <laughs> was, was circulated further. So um, we've had a whole, you know, different meetings, American Fisheries Society, Moat Symposia, NCs, um, in, in, in different places. We've been trying to advance this thing in a sort of an ad hoc um, manner. Um, and, you know, this down here, this fisheries ecosystem plan, we got $2 million to, 
to use for four councils on the East Coast to jumpstart their, their um, ecosystem-based approach. And I think Jason was reporting on some of the work for New England and Mid-Atlantic. Um, in 1999, they were already starting to think, what are we going to do with, with reauthorization? And I'm not going to give you the legislative history, but there were numerous bills that, that were introduced um, and, and had hearings, some of, some of which had hearings. Some of them, the, the Kerry bill, actually had uh, language on, on a mandatory ecosystem-based uh, approach. Um, but it really wasn't until the 2000, um, uh, and six reauthorization of the, the uh, Magnus Stevens Act that, that we got new language uh, for, for ecosystem-based management. And uh, despite the number of words about ecosystem-based management and the sort of the, the, the approach, you'll notice that it's not a mandatory <laughs> movement. It's basically encouraging people to move, move ahead with, with, um, with this at the council uh, level. And the reason for that is really you know, I think that there was a feeling around National Marine Fisheries Service and certainly those of us that were in advisory capacity that, that we weren't ready yet to write the language that would make this a mandatory kind of, kind of approach. So lots of, lots of different, different things across the United States, out in Hawaii, uh, developing a, an archipelagic fishery management plan. Uh, really interesting uh, things have, have, uh, have been going on. At the same time, we were getting a parallel track with marine protected areas, with the, the protected areas um, executive order of Clinton that talked about setting up a, a network of, of um, marine protected areas around the United States. And yeah, I don't think any of you read it in the Seattle Times, but um, a, week, a week ago Monday, um, the, the U.S. charter network for MPAs was launched uh, by uh, Dr. Lubchenco in Annapolis, Maryland, 225 sites. So um, hold, on to your, hold on to your hats. Um, <laughs> mentioned the Pew Oceans Act. Um, when you act, you know, I, I, I've asked the, the members of both of these, the U.S. Ocean Commission and the Pew Ocean Commission, where did they get their idea for an ecosystem-based approach? And they said, your 1999. <laughs> Uh, report. We thought that was a really good, good way to, to move move forward, and so I thought, wow, well, we must have had some influence. Uh, but again, the question that I want to really talk about is, you know, what what explains why it takes so long? And so the reasons that I've I've come.